Let's take a look at double digit multiplication. We'll start by looking at multiplying two digits by two digits. Here is a two digit number. We have a three and we have a seven. The three is worth 30 and the seven is worth seven. Here is another two digit number. We have the number 23. And then so, there's two digits. And like I said, we're gonna learn about multiplication. So we'll put a multiplication sign there. Now to start with this 37 times 23, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and look at that first number here, this three here, and I'm gonna circle it there. And we're gonna figure out the product of 37 times three. We're gonna figure out that product of 37 times three. 37 times three, if I write it over here, three times three is nine plus two is 11, that's 111. Now, what we do for our double digit multiplication problem and the steps there, we actually write them all together, where it's three times seven is 21, and this is what I mean, one, regroup the two, three times three is nine plus two is 11, and we write that right there. Now the product of 37 times 23 of course cannot be 111 because we already know that the product of 37 times 3 is 111. So there's still some more steps. We cross out a regroup because we used that already and then we work with the other digit here. We have not figured out the product if we broke it down into 37 times 3 and then add it together with that 37 times 20. We haven't figured out the product of 37 times 20 yet. Now this 20 here, and 37 times 20, I could write it off to the side. And what we do is we're saying 37 times two tens. That's why we have to place a zero there, because that two is worth 20. And then so two times seven then is 14. Four regroup the one, two times three is six, plus one is seven. So my product of 37 times 20 is 740, which will be written right here. What you would do is that you would do that right inside of the problem where you placed a zero to begin with, because I call that the magic zero, because this was worth 20, and then you go through that multiplication process where you went two times seven, which was 14, place the four, regroup the one, two times three, which was six, plus one, which is seven. And then so at that point, I put together the 111 and the 740. By putting them together, I'm saying add them. And this is what I get for my answer there. So this right here is the product 37 times three, which was the ones digit there of that number we were multiplying by. This here is the product of 37 times 20, which was the tens place that we were multiplying by. And our answer to the whole problem is right here. That whole problem being 37 times 23 does equal 851. And that's double digit multiplication. To review again, we have 46 times 25. Now on that first line, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out that product of five times 46. Or 46 times five. On the second line, I'm working with that second digit. That second digit is worth what? Did you say 20? So that's the product of 46 times what? 20, right. When we figure out the product of 46 times 20, what we'll end up doing is we'll end up placing a zero there because <clears throat> then we can just figure out the product of 46 times two. Finally, on the last line, I'm gonna go ahead and um, write 46 times 25, and what did I do with those two numbers? Right, I would have added them. I would have added them. And then so, as you see here, this is the broken down here. 20 was broken down into five and 20. And so that's where it is that each of those products goes. And those are those steps. Here we have the problem 36 times 18. On that first line, we're gonna figure out the product of 36 and what? Eight, right. On the next line, we'll figure out the product of 36 times what? Did you say one? Hope not, because that one is worth what? 10. And on that final line, we're gonna figure out the product of what? <laughs> 
It's 36 times 18. And how do we do that? We do what with these two numbers here? We will add them. Here's those two products of 36 times 8 and 36 times 10. What would we do with those two numbers again? Add them. And then we would have that product. We would have that product. And then after you went through all those steps, if you didn't write out that product and didn't add them correctly, then that would be very sad. Now we're not going to go through all of those steps where it is that we write little squiggly lines and we write out as to what it is that each of these things is. We don't need to do that when we're actually solving these problems. What we'll do is we'll just take a look at each of those pieces and we'll multiply them step by step. The reason I wanted to show you that is so you understood as to where it is that we're placing numbers and why. We'll start with the what. Do we start with the two or do we start with the five? Right, we start with the ones place there. So we go five times what number? Seven, which is 35. Five regroup the three. Five times the six, which is 30, plus the three, which is 33, that is. Now, you always have to remember to cross out those regroups because we are figuring out the product of 67 times five and we don't want to accidentally use that again. Most students are able to figure out this first line. Now, this is where some students get a little bit confused and a little bit lost. They don't remember what to put on that second line. What we put is we put the answer to 67 times 20. <laughs> Other students will forget to place that magic zero, and then so their answer will automatically be wrong. 67 times 20, we place the zero, and then we can figure out the product of 67 times 2 by going step by step. 2 times 7 is 14, 4 regroup the 1, and 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1, which is 13. You'll notice that I lined up my digits very nicely here, and then I take the time to go ahead and add that there, and I will have my product. That's my product of 67 times 25. 67 times 25 does equal 1,675. If I asked you, what is the product of 67 times 20, would you know the answer to that? Yeah, it's 1,340. If I asked you what the product is of 67 times 5, would you know the answer to that? Yeah, you would. It's 335. My plus sign doesn't really look like a plus sign here, so I'm going to go ahead and write over it a little bit. Here are two problems for you to try. 36 times 21, 53 times 45. Don't forget that magic zero and go step by step. Hit pause and solve those two problems, please. Did you get 36 on your first line there? Most students will get that. That's 36 times 1. At this point, we're working with this 2 here, which is worth 20. So I go ahead and make sure to place a 0 because it's worth 20. 2 times 6 is 12, 2 regroup the 1, and 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1, which is 7. Did you get that for your second line? Adding them together carefully, I get 756. For the next problem, most of you will have that first line correct. Ideally, you'll know how to multiply a two-digit number by that single-digit number. If you didn't, that's okay. Learn from that mistake. You'll notice I remember to cross out my regroup as I continue with this next step. That 4 is worth 40. That 4 is worth 40, and that's why I place a magic zero there. Then I go ahead and work 4 times 3 first, which is 12, 2, regroup the 1, and 4 times 5, which is 20, plus 1, which is 21. What do we do with those two numbers? Right, add them. And when we add them together, we get 2,385. 53 times 45 is 2,385. All right, let's go ahead and review. I've done that first step for you of 67 times what number? 3, right. So 67 times 3 is 201. 
What product is going to go next? 67 times what? Did you say 67 times 50? Hope so. In our multiplication process, what step comes next? 67 times 50, but what do we have to remember to do before we do that? <laughs> you might have said to cross out the regroup, or you might have said, hey, place a zero. That's the most common mistake, either not to cross out that regroup, or not to, so you accidentally use it for your next step, or to not place that zero. We place the zero because the five is worth 50, and then we'll multiply either five times seven or five times six. We start in the ones place, the five times the seven, which is 35. Five regroup the three, five times the six, which is 30, plus three, which is 33. What do we do with those two numbers again? We add them. And then so that last line again is 67 times 53. So that there is double digit multiplication when we have two digits in both of those factors. Remember to line up your numbers carefully when you're adding, place your zero when you need to, and remember to add in those regroups.